So after watching our first video about energy on a boat, this second video focuses entirely on the portable power generator that was given to us by EcoFlow. With this versatile lithium battery, we can be part of the big boy boats without switching our entire battery bank to lithium. If you're not into review videos, you maybe want to skip this, but I believe it will be quite informative for those who look into upgrading the comfort of their off-grid home. In the beginning, when we didn't know anything about boats, we actually thought that as soon as the engine runs, the alternator would somehow power some device that magically makes all the sockets work, yeah. which is usually not the case. You, you'd have to like buy these inverters that are installed in your system to make that work. But instead of doing that for a thousand bucks, I guess, we just bought a cheap inverter from uh, Home Depot and attached that on the batteries themselves. And with a little like an extension cable, we can just pull, pull that out and use 230 volts through an inverter that's attached to the batteries in case we don't have shore power. And that cable just comes out here and goes back in. The downside of this cheap solution is that we can only use traditional low power devices that do not have a USB charge option, such as the toothbrush charger. As soon as we want to use the typical comfort of house devices, the inverter as well as the lead acid batteries are just underpowered and conk out. More and more boats switch to lithium for the house bank in order to use those high power devices off grid, like cook on induction or use the water kettles instead of gas. And that makes sense, as gas bottles deplete and cannot recharge. It's just another type of energy storage that complicates boat life. But the switch to a lithium house bank is very expensive. We found that an alternative to upgrading the complete house bank is to only add a portable power station. EcoFlow sent us the Delta 1300 power station to review and test in our setup. This is not a technical review, you will find many of those on YouTube. We rather want to show you why we are happy to carry an additional ready-to-use battery bank. So the cool thing about those uh, new age battery banks slash electricity generators is that you can actually use your high voltage and high amp tools or uh, kitchen supplies without the need to upgrade your domestic bank. There are many YouTube videos out there that tell you how to exchange your domestic bank with lithium batteries and they usually spend 10,000 euros. We don't have that kind of money, but we can still benefit from lithium when we have this dedicated system. So basically every morning we could and some mornings we do make tea and coffee on these things, bake an egg, just have a quick warm breakfast using the induction. This is way nicer than cooking on gas because it doesn't get hot, there's no gas inside the boat and no open fire. On the display on the left you can see how long the battery will last under the current load. In the middle the percentage of charge and on the right side the input and output. On the bottom right you currently see 1600 watts of output which is the kettle and the induction plate at the same time. I actually tested it together, like turning both on and then I ended up using about 18-1900 in total to um, make coffee and boil water at the same time and it worked quite well. The, the fans start running higher when you have uh, more load on it so it gets a bit louder but it's nothing compared to when you would run an inverter with the engine or a, a gasoline generator for that matter. Also when you turn it off it's off again. The Delta has a 1260 watt hour battery and can deliver continuously 1800 watt pure sine AC. So to give you a rough idea of what that means, I boiled a liter of water from our tanks with our electric kettle. It took about 6 minutes and 6% of charge. The way we recharge the Delta is through a cable that runs into our uh, 12 volt car plug. It takes about 12 hours to recharge the whole battery if it's empty, but you can also run it from shore power or from like a 220 volt outlet. And then it never took us more than two hours to completely charge it. It was actually even less than that. So that was pretty cool. So whenever we are in the marina, we plug that one in and it's up again in no time. And after that, we use the 12 volt charging method to just charge up slowly. This is the display when using fast charging from a wall outlet. 
and you can see an input of about 1000 watts. This leads to a recharging time of about 40 minutes when at 44% charge. In the last video we showed you how it is possible to charge USB-C MacBooks with a charge of 30 watts right from our battery bank. But after a full day of editing after sunset we use the Delta to continue to charge because we need the energy in the house bank to power the fridge through the night. The Delta offers two USB-C ports that provide us with 60 watts, so that is just as much as from the normal MacBook chargers. It is possible to charge the Delta and use it at the same time. So here I am charging through the 12 volt car charger at about 100 watts of input and the USB-C port charges the MacBook with 60 watts of output. Next to the USB-C ports there are two USB-A and two USB-A fast charge ports and on the back four AC sockets on the international version of the Delta. And a 12 volt car charger outlet. So I started cooking at 96% charged. Then I first fried some onions. Then I made these so-called Schupfnudeln, which is a German thing that I found here in Spain. It's really cool. Fried those quite hot actually to get them nice and crispy. And now I am making a mushroom coconut sauce. And actually for the mushrooms I need like really hot pan. So I'm using it quite high and it's drawing like, I don't know, over a thousand watts. And right now I'm at 85%, so I only use about 11% and my meal's almost done. So it's down to 2% now. And I'm curious what it does when it goes to zero. Oh, it says overload now and it stops. <gasps> All right, so that's what happens. When it's at 1% and it's empty, it automatically blocks. So there's one cable that I did not show you yet and that is a charging cable with MC4 connectors. That hints to a solar charge possibility and that's true. You can charge the EcoFlow Delta with solar panels. We are not going to do it on a regular basis because we just charge uh, the house banks with our solar and with that then afterwards the Delta. But in case of a lightning strike or if our batteries are faulty and nothing works on a boat anymore, we can unhook our solar panels and charge the uh, Delta directly. And with that we can then charge our VHF which is micro USB and our phones which are USB. That enables us to stay in touch in case something bad happens. So this is how we will probably use the generator long term. Because with this adapter we can use our regular shore power cable that comes with a 16 amp plug and then turn that into a Shuko. And this just goes into the Delta and this end goes into the boat. So dirty. <laughs> so salty and dirty. <laughs> So with the shore power cable and the adapter, we can plug in the Delta to as a pseudo shore power socket. Basically using it the same way as the other boats in the Anchorage that instead use gasoline power generators. And then power the whole AC system on the boat. So we don't need to unplug and replug single devices. No, every socket in the boat works. And also if we really want to, we can charge our domestic banks and we can heat water in our big water heater that will probably not gonna lie suck out all of the charge that's in the Delta but we could if you wanted to so after we're done filming this video we will very likely put the EcoFlow in a cabin so to protect it from the weather and the salt in the air around us because if it gets windy here there's like salt particles flying around and electric devices do get damaged and we will feed a cable probably through a window to the shore power connector outside of the boat while the delta will stay in a cabin and then we basically have limited capacity of 
shore power on our boat, which is pretty cool. Even though we will install it in a convenient place for us, we will make sure that we use it temporarily only because this is not a permanent solution. One of the reasons is because the delta is ungrounded. If we were to use faulty AC devices with metal surfaces in an ungrounded circuit, there is a chance of electric shock. AC is not a toy, so don't play around with electricity. We make sure that we only use it when we're in flat seas and we detach it after we use it. So I think Alex did a pretty good job explaining the Ecoflow there. Leave us a comment if you have any more questions that are unanswered. And I do like to point out that normally we do not do cooperations like this. But when Ecoflow wrote us and told us about the existence of these devices, we got really excited and at the risk of sounding tacky, it really did change boat life for us. We mainly use it for cooking and also charging laptops. And, and when it's a really hot day, I just love not having to stand above a fire stove and just using induction for cooking, which is, apart from less hot, also way more efficient and quicker. So we can use the time that we spare to make videos like these for you guys. So if we'd have money to spare and we're looking for an affordable solution to get more battery power on the boat, this one would definitely be on top of our list. I really don't want to live without it anymore right now. So if you want to know a bit more about it, there's a link in the description down below that leads to the EcoFlow website. But full disclosure, if you decide to buy one of these babies through that link, we will get a small percentage of that sale, which is quite a nice way to support us without having to spend extra money. Apart, of course, from the fact that you now have to spend money for this really cool device. And let's face it, you can never have enough ways to store energy on your boat. If you're in the market for portable generators, I'm sure you will continue to do your own research. This shouldn't be the only video you watch, but it should have been your first. I hope you got something out of it, and on Saturday we're back with a regular episode of See the Little Things. Okay, bye.